Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello and welcome to the last of the 2021 semi-finals, in which we'll learn who's taking the fourth seat in the Brain of Britain final on this very stage next week. And how sweet it is to be able to welcome not just our competitors, but a real live audience into the theatre here for the first time in 20 months. It still feels a little odd because you're well spread out for safety reasons, but you're hugely welcome. And your applause and support for our contestants will make an enormous difference. Thank you for coming. A commemorative medal should be struck for you. <laughs> and with us today are the last three of our outright heat winners from the 2021 season, alongside another of the top scoring runners up who only just missed out on a victory and is happily caught by our repercharge safety net. Let's ask them to reintroduce themselves. My name is Derek Hayes. I'm a retired school teacher from Horwich in Lancashire. Hello, I'm Dave McBrien. I'm a writer originally from Dublin, living for many years in Edinburgh. Hello, I'm Rachel Pagan. I'm a communications manager from Pimlico in London. Hello, my name's Liz Wallacher. I live near Ely in Cambridgeshire, and I'm an exam invigilator. Welcome back. Welcome back, all of you. There are no rule changes to contend with at this stage in the tournament. Just remember that you're all pretty hot on the button and it may seem tempting to get in quickly for your bonus. Just please do make sure you wait until the first person has had their 10 seconds thinking time before you start flashing in or until I open the question. Good luck, everyone. There's no one alphabetically before Derek Hayes today. So, Derek, the first round starts with you. Which influential jazz saxophonist wrote the 1946 Yardbird Suite? Charlie Parker? It was. It was a 32-bar composition rather than a, a real suite, by the way. Which popular Middle Eastern aubergine-based dish has a name usually translated as spoiled dad or father? Tajine? No. Uh, Liz Wallica? Moussaka? No. Yes, Rachel, pa Rachel Pagan. Imam Bayardi? No. Baba Ganoush. <laughs> Baba Ganoush. <laughs> Dave McBride, we come to you. What's the name of the statue on top of the Central Criminal Court, popularly known as the Old Bailey, in London? Um, is it just Lady Justice? Lady Justice is what, you, what many people do call it, or simply Justice, yes. Dick Grayson is the real name of which comic book character first introduced in a 1940 strip by Bob Kane and Bill Finger? Robin. Robin the Boy Wonder, yes, he was an addition to the existing Batman strip and reportedly doubled its sales. Midas, who in classical legend acquired the power of turning things into gold by touching them, was the ruler of which kingdom? Oh, um... Was it Lydia? It wasn't, no. no. Was Derek Hayes. Phrygia? Phrygia, yes, now part of Turkey, yes. His reign has been dated to the late 8th century BC. Rachel Pagan's question, what is the biological term for the white part of an egg? Albumen? Yes. Father and son Eugene and Dan Levy are the creators and stars of which acclaimed comedy series set largely around a motel in a rural North American town. Schitt's Creek? Yes. In Greek mythology, Aia, the island whose name consists only of A's and E's, is the home of which beautiful sorceress who turns Odysseus's crew into swine? Circe? Circe is the right answer, yes. The only autobiography known to have been written by a Renaissance artist, although completed in about 1562, wasn't published until the 18th century and then became hugely popular throughout Europe. Which artist? Caravaggio. No. Liz Wallach. Leonardo. No. Uh, Derek Hayes. Raphael. No. Dave McBride. Titian? No, none of those. It was Benvenuto Cellini. Liz Wallacher's question we've come to now. Which river in Cornwall has a name that's also that of a hoofed mammal? 
Camel. Camel, from the Cornish Daur, camel, meaning crooked river, yes. Which word of Greek origin, in common use in English, translates as good death? Euthanasia? Yes. What name links characters played by Rick Mayle and Macaulay Culkin? Mm. Lord Flashheart. <laughs> no. But it's a good suggestion. Dave McBride? Kevin? No. This one has escaped. You know it hasn't? Rachel Pagan? Alan? No. Not going to come, no. Richie Rich is the answer. <laughs> Culkin was the title character in a 1994 film, and Rick Mayle was one of the title characters, one of them, in the TV comedy Filthy, Rich and Catflap. That's the end of the first round. And look at this for scores in a semi-final. What you'd expect, really. Derek Hayes, two. Dave McBrien, two. Liz Wallacher, two. Rachel Pagan, three. <laughs> Right, Derek Hayes, back to you. The South American species of bird with the scientific name Steatornis carapensis has traditionally been hunted not for its meat but to provide fuel for lamps and cooking. As a result, it's usually known in English by which seven-letter name? Guano? No. Yes, Rachel Pagan? Paraffin? No. Liz Wallacher? Quetzal? No. Nobody knows, I think. It's, it's called the oil bird. Now it's Dave McBrien we come to. The British singer who had a number one hit with the song Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, from the Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber musical Evita in 1977, had recorded it for the original album, but declined to appear in the lead role when the show was staged. What is her name? Uh, Julie Covington. It is, yes, collector's item of a singer. It was the then relatively unknown Elaine Page who took the role in the West End. Although it's still sometimes notionally used, the guinea, in the form of an actual coin, was taken out of circulation in England in which decade of the 19th century? 1880s. No. Derek Hayes? The 1810s, 1813, I think, I go that way. That is exactly right. Wow. Yes, it was last <laughs> struck. <laughs> last struck in 1813, as you say. Certain professional fees are still calculated in guineas, and they appear famously in the, in the names of horse races. Rachel Pagan, on which planet was Superman born, according to the early comics and films? Krypton. It was. In which decade of the 20th century was the monumental landmark of Ayers Rock returned to the Aboriginal Australians and officially renamed Uluru? 1980s. Yes, 1985, bang in the middle. The Daphne Ackhurst Memorial Cup is awarded to the winner of which tennis tournament? Queens. No. Derek Hayes. Eastbourne? No. Dave McBrien? The US Open? No. Liz Wallacher? Australian Open. Absolutely right. <laughs> yes. The Australian <laughs> Open women's singles. Daphne Ackhurst won five Australian singles titles and nine Australian doubles titles between 1924 and 1931. Liz Wallacher, your turn. In Roman numerals, what letters denote the number 555? DLV. Yes, indeed, DLV. A stage musical co-written by Lin-Manuel Miranda before his global success with Hamilton has now been adapted into a musical film premiered in June 2021 and starring Anthony Ramos and Melissa Barrera. What's it called? Matador. No. Dave McBrien? In the Heights. In the Heights. The Heights referred to uh, Washington Heights, a predominantly Latino neighborhood in New York City. End of another round. Here are the scores now, and they're still just as close as they were in a slightly different configuration. Derek Hayes now three, Dave McBrien and Liz Wallacher four apiece, and Rachel Pagan five. Clearly, this shows every sign of being a very close one. Derek Hayes, time for a sound clip for you. 
2021 marks the 70th anniversary of the first episode of a popular American TV series which began life as a radio show. Here's part of the program's famous introduction, but can you complete the words of the announcer? Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. Don't turn off your set. <laughs> no. Dave McBride? The names have been changed uh, to, to protect the innocent? Or... Exactly. Oh, right. okay. yep. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you staggered to the end and you yeah. got it right, yes. <laughs> the names have been changed to protect the innocent, yes. That ominous four-note introduction to Dragnet was composed by Walter Schumann, derived from Miklos Rocha's score for the 1946 film The Killers. Dave McBrien, your turn. Laverne and Shirley and Joni Loves Chatty were spin-off series from which successful American TV situation comedy first shown in 1974. Happy Days. Yes, which starred Ron Howard and Henry Winkler. How many unoccupied squares are there at the start of a traditional game of English drafts? Forty. Forty is the right answer. Well done, yes. Small copper, violet copper, and large copper are all types of what kind of living creature? Butterfly. Butterflies, they are. Also known as the Western Rising, a rebellion against the imposition of the Book of Common Prayer took place in 1549 in which two English counties? Devon and Cornwall. Devon and Cornwall. Correct, yes. According to a tale in Ovid's Metamorphoses, the white fruit of which tree was permanently transformed to a shade of dark red after it was stained with the blood of the ill-fated lovers Pyramus and Thisbe? Damson? Mm, no. Liz Wallacher? Holly? No. Rachel Pagan? Mulberry. Mulberry, yes. And it's your turn. In 1976, the G6 group of nations became the G7, when which country was added to the group? Italy. No. Sorry. Dave McBride. Canada. Canada, yes. The G6 consisted of the UK, France, Japan, Germany, the USA, and Italy. Then came Canada. Liz Wallacher, multum in parvo, roughly translating as a lot in a small space, is the motto of which English county? Rutland. Yes. The township of Fiesole, which overlooks the city of Florence, was enriched with fine buildings by the Romans and in 63 BC served as the headquarters of Catiline, the Roman statesman and conspirator, which earlier civilization had created and administered Fiesole. The Spartans. Mm, no. Dave McBrien? Etruscans. The Etruscans. It was part of a greater confederacy called Etruria, and parts of the Etruscan town walls are still to be seen there. And the scores have leapt up to this stage. Derek Hayes has three, Liz Wallacher five, for Rachel Pagan six, Dave McBrien now 11. And at that very interesting stage, and roughly the halfway stage in the contest, it's time to let our contestants sit back and have a bit of a breather as they tackle a couple of questions from a Brain of Britain listener hoping to beat the brains. This won't make a difference to the scores, and the contenders can confer and collaborate on these questions. In fact, I hope they will, in as lively a way as possible. And there's a bit of a treat in store for our brains today because the questions we've chosen have come from Bobby Seagull, the teacher and author and former University Challenge team captain and host of his own TV series with Eric Monkman. Bobby's questions are on a theme that's especially appropriate for our first show with a real-life audi audience since uh, last year's lockdown. They are on the theme of clapping. Here's Bobby's first question, if you're ready. Inspired by a visit to a flamenco bar in Brussels featuring clapping, an American composer wrote a piece called Clapping Music in 1972 to be performed entirely by the clapping of two performers. Which composer was it? Oh, I have no idea. 
Okay, well, let's find an American <coughs> composer from 1972 then. Yeah, I, I, it should be easy. It's, it's, it could be like Glass or Reich. Uh, uh, um, uh, I've definitely heard of this, but I can't remember. Okay. Not Cage, is it? Not Cage. Uh, Cage, actually, Cage is a very strong possibility. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Cage. I like that. I like that. Yeah. We'll go for Cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go with Cage. And is that the verdict of you all? Yes. yes. It is. It is. <laughs> That's a shame because you've mentioned the right answer. Oh. Oh. It, it is it Steve Reich. Right. Oh, right. It's Steve Reich. Right. Right. Bobby was generous enough to include the word minimalist in his original question, but we left oh. it out because we thought that <laughs> might make it. Too obvious. <laughs> in an interview, Reich recalled that the flamenco music in the bar that night featured guitar playing and singing by two female performers, and it was terrible until they started clapping, at which point the visiting musicians were mesmerised and the spark of the piece was lit. OK, here's Bobby Siegel's second question. A pop song built on a sample of Steve Reich's clapping music was released in 2012 on the debut studio album of an American group. Its title was On Top of the World. Which group? <laughs> debut album 2012. Yeah, I've heard this too in, in connection, connection with the previous one, but I don't think I can remember this um, either. No, um, I don't know. Group, group 2012. Mm. I can't even come up with a guess. No. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think he's defeated us here. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Okay. Drawn a blank? Mm. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Imagine Dragons, mm -hmm. the rock band mm -hmm. from Las Vegas. The song has been used many times in films, on TV, and in video games, and a version of it was even performed at Barack Obama's second presidential inauguration in January 2013. So, our thanks to Bobby Siegel and congratulations too on beating the brains. They couldn't manage uh, either part, so we'll be getting a book voucher prize to you in short order. And what more appropriate reward could there be for your clapping questions? <laughs> but for the first time in a series and a half, we offer you a real, live, handmade round of applause. Lovely. We're always delighted to receive question ideas for this section of the programme, so please do keep them coming while we're off air over the winter months. You can email them at any time to brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk. Remember to include the answers to your questions, along with some basic contact details, so we can let you know if we plan to use them. Time to get back to the semi-final, then, and if you're all set, the next round begins with you again, Derek Hayes. The Third Battle of Ypres fought in Flanders in 1917, is better remembered by the name of which village a few miles east of Ypres, which was taken in the later stages of the offensive? Passchendaele. Passchendaele is right, yes. Which town in North Wales was granted city status in 2012 to mark the diamond jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II? St. Asaph. St. Asaph, along with Chelmsford in England and Perth in Scotland, yes. Chickenpox is caused by contracting which virus? Variola? Not mm. quite, no. Very too pagan? Vario Keller? Vario Keller or Seller? All right, I'll give you that, yes. <laughs> varicella, varicella, and ideally varicella hyphen zoster. But yes, we'll give you the point for that. Dave McBrien, here's the theme music to a show which in 2021 marked the 50th anniversary of its launch. Your question will come when we've heard it. Here's an interesting proposition. No prizes for recognising that as the theme to the talk show Parkinson, hosted, of course, by Michael Parkinson. The last ever regular programme broadcast in December 2007 was an extended edition in which Parky welcomed back many of his favourite ever guests. Can you name any two of them? Billy Connolly and... Uh, I don't know, I guess Ali wouldn't have been... Oh, I can't think of another say Ali. No. Liz Walker? Rod Holland, Grace Jones? No. Derek Hayes? Jeff Boyko and George Best. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a 
combustion, <laughs> yes. Um, no more of us? No. Well, the, the list I have here is Billy Connolly, that was right, yes. Peter Kay, Michael Caine, David Attenborough, Judy Dench, David Beckham, Jamie Cullum, and Dame Edna Everidge. <laughs> Emu wasn't invited, strangely. <laughs> Uh, Rachel Pagan, who was chosen by Hitler to make the official documentary film of the 1936 Berlin Olympic Games? Uh, Leafy von Riefenstahl? Leni Riefenstahl, yes. The film was called Olympia. Which fruit would you add to a hollandaise sauce to produce sauce Maltese? Orange? Yes, specifically blood orange, but any orange will do, I suppose. If you suffer from bruxism... What are you likely to do in the night? Snore. No. Derek Hayes. Grind your teeth. Grind your teeth. Yes, it sounds like it too, doesn't it? Liz Wallacher now. In the 13th century, Henry III began construction of a special building at the Tower of London to accommodate which animal sent as a gift by Prince Louis of France? An elephant. It, well, if that was a guess, it was the right one. Yes, it was an elephant. It was said to be the first elephant seen in Europe since the time of Hannibal. What name is usually given to the technique taught to novice skiers in which the ski tips are brought together and the inner edges of the skis dug into the snow in order to slow to a halt? Mm. I'm going to make up the verb feeing. No. no, I think I th I've heard that used, mm. but that's not the official name okay. of the manoeuvre. Dave McBride? Snow ploughing. Snow ploughing, oh, yeah. yes. And I think that's about as far as I got before I dislocated <laughs> my shoulder and never went back. Um, that's the end of a round. Here are the scores now. Derek Hayes and Liz Wallacher, six apiece. Rachel Pagan, nine. Dave McBride, 12. And you've answered so many questions correctly, and, and the rounds have been so long that this, I'm afraid, has to be the final one. So, Derek Hayes, which comic entertainer from Lancashire, whose popular radio show ran from 1956 to 72, and who died the following year, had a surname that was identical to the name of the town where he was born? Clitheroe. Jimmy, Jimmy Clitheroe, Clitheroe yeah. yes. So not Eric Morecambe or George Formby, for example. <laughs> it was Jimmy Clitheroe. Which BBC presenter and radio newsreader is the author of the series of illustrated children's books about Gaspard the Fox? No. no. Rachel Pagan? Zeb Soames? It is Zeb Soames, yes. The voice you hear at the very beginning of this programme every time. Dave McBrown, which independent country in the Balkans derives its name from a Serbian place name that means field of blackbirds? Uh, this Kosovo? It is Kosovo, uh -huh. yes. Well found. Now, this starts with a quote. The voice made many a man's heart beat that had been turned to stone. It enlightened many a man's mind which had been cast into uttermost darkness. These lines are part of Over This Land, a poem written in the Georgian language in 1895 by someone who was to become famous for reasons other than poetry. Who was that author? Stalin? It was Joseph Stalin, yes, indeed. And uh, reasons other than poetry is uh, putting it mildly. The poetically named Bocas del Dragon, or Dragon's Mouths, is a channel in the Caribbean Sea that separates the northwestern extremity of Trinidad from the northeast of which South American country? Venezuela. Venezuela is right, yes. Subtitled A Memoir of Love, Secrets and Lies in Wolverhampton, Journalist Satnam Sanghera's account of growing up in the Midlands in the 1980s is called The Boy with a What? No, I don't know. Okay. Liz Wallacher does. Dream? No. No more volunteers? No. 
I don't think it's very guessable. The boy with a top knot. Oh, one word, <laughs> yes. Rachel Pagan, and here comes music for you from a 2021 classical album release by Theodor Kurinzis and the Musica Eterna Orchestra. Here they perform one of Beethoven's symphonies. I'd just like you to tell me which numbered symphony this is. Dave McBride? Sixth. No. Liz Walker? Ninth. No. <laughs> Ready for one more guess? Yes, Derek Hayes. Third. No, it's the seventh. <laughs> Written in 1811 and 12. That orchestra was founded in Novosibirsk. Liz Walker, which of the politicians who have led the UK Liberal Democrats has been leader for the longest, serving for 11 years? David Steele? No. Derek Hayes. Paddy Ashdown. Paddy Ashdown mm. is the right one. And that's the end of the round. And indeed, it's the end of the fourth and last semi final of Brain of Britain 2021, with these being the scores. Liz Wallacher, six points. Derek Hayes, eight points. Rachel Pagan, 10. Dave McBrien, 15. <laughs> So huge congratulations at the end of all that to Dave McBrien, meaning that our final will be contested between Dave McBrien, Phil Small, Carl Whelan and Alan Hodgson. One of those will be named the 68th official Brain of Britain. I can't wait to find out which of them it will be. I must express our thanks and commiserations to the other three of you. What an impressive performance you've all given across the series and indeed this time. It's been excellent to have an equal spread of male and female contestants in our semi-final today and we've seen some very, very strong performances from women across the series this year. So don't leave all the quiz glory to the men. You you can request an application form for a future series by emailing us at brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk. Meanwhile, right here at the same time next week, we'll bring you the Brain of Britain final. Do join us. And until then, thanks for listening and goodbye.